Hi, I'm Mark Schwartzlitz with AccuOSS. Today we have a demo of NetCool Operations Insight, also known as NOI. In today's demo, the customer is a ski resort owner and operator. They have multiple sites across North America or across the US. They have, as you can imagine, quite a large network uh, across the US and being mountainous terrain for all their sites, they lose connectivity quite often. And it's been hard in the past for them to troubleshoot this. They, the POS system goes down, they have uh, traditional applications like they have a reservation system. All of these things are affected by the fact that they lose connectivity. The other thing that they've had problems with is actually figuring out how to troubleshoot it. They've gotten numerous types of monitoring tools. However, they don't aggregate all the information together into a single pane of glass. So they have no way that other than to switch between monitors or look between the monitoring tool systems. And you can see on the right hand side, they have a number of different screens that they, they had to look at uh, and then do the troubleshooting based on that. Hard to isolate that way. Uh, very hard to do resolution as well. And it's all manual notification at that point, trying to find the problem first, isolate it, and then create a trouble ticket by hand or by typing it in manually, very time consuming. So let's take a look at the console for NetCool Operations Insight. So you can see here in this console, as the level one operations engineer, my job here is to triage all the alerts and information that's coming in. In this case, you can see I have a topo map, a topology map on the left, upper left-hand side here. And you can see I have a number of sites that are affected with minor alerts. In this case, I can see that they're actually maintenance alerts. And I have four sites that are good and one with critical alerts. So these reflect the highest level of alerts for that particular site. I have a, num a number of key performance indicators here. So I can see all the different types of services, how many events there are for servers, network, and so on. I can also sort the list that's here based on the service. If I want to go ahead and look at that particular service, I can see that these are all of my network alerts. And interestingly here, I can see that I have one critical alert and the purple ones are actually suppressed alerts. I also have some key performance indicators up here at the top. Talk about different severity, how many of the different severities I have, and also how many unacknowledged and what the severity of those unacknowledged alerts are. Event list here. And you can see that one of them is flashing. I can see the three minor alerts here. These all look to be at a quick glance, just uh, maintenance issues. So we'll put those off. I have one that's flashing that you can see here. That's a predictive alert. So in this particular case, I have a predictive alert that's come in. And since I have two criticals here and there's only one critical on my sitemap, they are probably related in some way. And I can see here that the actual alert came in 10 minutes after the predictive alert. So let's take a look at the predictive alert. First thing I'm going to do is acknowledge that alert. So other folks will come and pick it up and start doing troubleshooting at the same time. So I've acknowledged that alert and that actually changes the color. As you can see, it turns it to a darker color with white lettering. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the metrics that it's been gathering. I can see that there's five metrics on three different servers. And let's take a look at that. So you can see here the metrics over time. I have the nodes that are listed up here on the right left side. And then I have the metrics that are being measured here on the left, the node that those metrics come from, and then the metrics themselves, what's coming in now and what is expected and you can see over time, it has a pretty regular fluctuation, sometimes a little more critical than others. And the great thing about this tool is that you don't have to set any thresholding in it. It learns over time what's normal operations and what metrics should look like across the different nodes and the different metrics that are gathered across those nodes. And we can see here that there's been an uh, abnormal increase in those metrics and the pattern of those metrics. 
if you notice here on the left side, there's a spike here as well, but that's a normal spike. That's a spike that comes in, let's say every Monday morning or every morning at nine o'clock, every night at 5 p.m. It's a normal spike. So without the thresholding, everything looks perfect and I don't have to worry about anything. It will go ahead and notify me if it sees something that's out of, out of the norm. So let's go back to our console. There is a critical alert here. So let's take a look at the critical alert. Now, I could, if I had been proactive and actually caught this in time, we could have acknowledged it, we could assign it, we can create a trouble ticket, we could go ahead and do a number of actions as well. But let's drill in because we can see now that the site is actually affected by a true outage. So let's take a look. When I open up the site, I can see the key indicators here all green and then I can see down here is my actual alert and what I'm seeing is if I open up the actual alert the event itself I can see the alerts that have come in underneath it and these purple alerts are symptomatic alerts and you can see here that they're marked as symptoms they've come in from different types of monitoring tools so in some cases, they're coming in from an APM or an application performance management tool. And in some cases, they're coming in from a network management tool. So these purples have been suppressed. You can see here the indicator on the actual topology map. I could actually highlight those indicators or highlight those topology devices. I can expand that view. So let's go ahead and take a look at a larger view of that particular network. And we can see it here now. And in just a second, we'll get an update on the status and you'll be able to see that here's our main problem. This is the router that's having, in this particular case, a GBIC error. And it's affecting this device here. And that's the link between them. And you can see the status there. So what I would do is I would click on that. I would go ahead and acknowledge that one and I can again assign it to users, I can assign it to groups, I can take journal notes, so I can type something up in here, like uh, replace the GBIC. And then those notes go into the actual ticket once I create it. So I can assign it, I can create notes, I can troubleshoot it, and then I can create the ticket. So let's go ahead and create a ticket for that one. Just again, another right-click tool. And you can see here the ticket's been requested. We'll do a quick update, and you can see here the ticket number that's assigned to it. So in this particular case, it's in ServiceNow. I could go and look in ServiceNow, I could look at that ticket, but it's automatically been assigned to a group or user. Uh, it has all those journal notes in it and it will automatically route to the right person and generate a notification. Now, all these things that I've done have been done manually. However, everything that I did here could be done automatically. And that way you eliminate um, all the time that it takes. You can see that I populated the ticket very quickly with the information, all the relevant information that's already in the system, as well as notes that I took myself and who it was assigned to and so on. So now I could, now that I've done that, I could go back to the original screen and my original dashboard, and I could go ahead and take care of these maintenance items.